Hi, Vadim here. So how is it possible that Go has different rules? How did it come to this? Don't worry, you don't have to know what rules you're playing with and the game would still be the same. Good old Go. If you just learn how to play Go, I suggest that you stop thinking about all this rule set nonsense and it's better to focus on Go strategy and tactics. Or perhaps you don't even know the rules of Go yet. Then you need to go and watch that first. This is our modern Go rules tutorial that will get you started in Go in no time. Unless you learn the rules of Go in China, you probably know the Japanese rules. They're fairly common in Europe and the US. It's also these rules that we use in our teaching videos. So how did it happen that Go was invented in China and we play by the Japanese rules? There are several historical reasons for that. For centuries, Japan had been an unmatched leader in the game and they made great contributions to Go game theory. And you can learn more about that in one of our videos right there. So what's the difference between the two rule sets? There are several, but the biggest one lies in scoring. In Japanese rules, we use territory scoring and in Chinese rules, area scoring is used. Territory, area, it sounds like the same thing. So the main question is, do we count the fence, the border, the stones that surround our territory or not? Under Japanese rules, only the empty space is counted. In Chinese rules, however, we count both the empty space and the stones. So you can think of it this way. Every stone you place on the board, you also get the territory underneath that stone. In most cases, the game results will be the same in both rule sets, but sometimes they may differ. Besides, these rule sets slightly affect gameplay. So let's take a look at this example. Let's count the score in this finished game. And I'm using a small board just to keep it simple. There are some captured stones here, and there are still two neutral points left to be filled on the board. If you're playing a game online, sometimes you don't even have to fill them. The computer will do everything for you. But remember, under Chinese rules, every stone you play on the board is your territory. So neutral points are no longer neutral. It's white's turn here, and white fills this point, getting one extra point. And black plays here. Let's count the score under Japanese rules first. We take the prisoners off the board first. Now we put them back. White prisoners go inside white's territory. And black go inside blacks. Now we can move the stones around for easier counting. And we can count. Mike, count the score, please. Black has 11 points and white has 13. So white wins by two points without Komi, just to keep it simple. Now, remember the result under Japanese rules, white wins by two points. Now let's go back and count the same game under Chinese rules. Now, surprise, under Chinese rules, we're not gonna need any of the captured stones. So we can just take them and drop them back into the bowls and then take all of these stones and put them back into the bowls as well. And we can do that because we're going to count all the stones that we place on the board. So if you capture 10 of my stones, and they get taken off the board, then consequently they won't get counted for me at the end of the game. And that means that we don't have to keep track of how many stones each of the players captured. Don't worry, I'm gonna explain why that is right after we count, so bear with me. Mike, let's count the territory under Chinese rules now. Black has 40 points and white has 41. So white wins by one point here without Komi. And here's the first difference. Under Japanese rules, white wins two points. And in Chinese rules, white wins only one point. So where's the missing point, I hear you ask? Black gets one extra point thanks to playing first. So we have to fix that somehow. And the solution is bigger komi. In Chinese rules, the komi is seven and a half points. Once we add six and a half and seven and a half points of komi respectively to our two scores, we'll get the same result. White wins by eight and a half points. So as you can see, we never needed those captured stones in the Chinese rules and the score was still exactly the same. But why is that? In his book, Go an Asian Paradigm for Business Strategy, Yasuyu Kimura reflects on the reasons behind the specifics of treating captured stones in Japanese rules. This difference goes a long way back in history. In medieval times, during internal wars in Japan, it was considered an honor for the defeated to change sides and join the winner. And this gets reflected in Japanese chess, shogi, as well. There are multiple versions of chess in Asian countries. Shanxi in China, 
Jungi in Korea, Shogi in Japan, but only in Shogi. You're allowed to use your opponent's prisoners and make them play on your side. So simply discarding prisoners in Go also seems unnatural to a Japanese player. So as you know, all prisoners are kept and returned to the opponent's territory at the end of the game. If you were playing a game online, then what I just showed you would be enough. But if you were playing a game over a physical board, then I need to show you how to count the score then under Chinese rules. In Japanese rules, we can simplify the counting by taking the prisoners and putting them into our opponent's territory. In Chinese rules, there is also a trick to make it more simple. Remember that when we counted the score, black had 40 points and white had 41. 40 and 41. That's 81 points in total. And that's the total area of the board. And that means that we can count only one color, for example black, and then we'll know the result. Who wins the game? So let's count black's territory first. We'll move the stones to make it easier. And let's count. Black has 14 points of territory. Remember that? Now we don't need the white stones anymore. Let's just take them off the board. And we only count the black stones now. And we count them in tens. So this is 10, this is another 10, and this is 6. So we have 26. 26 stones plus 14 points of territory make 40 points in total. Black has 40 points. And we know that the total area of the board is 81. So if black has 40, then white has to have 41. Then we add the Komi, 7.5, and, and we get the final result. White wins by 8.5. Now let's recap. What are the major differences of playing a game under Chinese rules? Number one, we use area scoring. It means that every stone you play on the board gives you points as well as the territory. Number two, we don't need to keep track of the captured stones. So when you capture some stones, you can just throw them back into the bowls. Three, Komi is seven and a half points. That's one point more than in Japanese rules. And four, and this is very important, you need to fill all of the neutral points because they're not neutral at all. Every neutral point you take gives you one extra point. And this is great news for beginners because if you're not sure if your territory is strong enough or not, can your opponent maybe invade later, you're not sure, just play another stone inside or two stones or three stones. You play stones inside and you don't lose anything because the stones that you play will get counted as your territory as well. This also makes it easier to resolve any of the controversial situations in Go. A bent four in the corner, for example. Under Japanese rules, you just have to remember that it's dead without proving it. But under Chinese rules, you can prove it easily. You just fill in all of the Ko threats, just get rid of all of them at the end of the game, and then play out the Ko and win it. So I would say that Chinese rules are more beginner friendly just for that reason. They're also more logical and precise, so all of the Go AI are built around using the Chinese rules. So a frequently asked question is this, what rules should be used when teaching beginners? So should we all start a revolution and switch to the Chinese rules, allowing everyone to play as many stones inside their territory as they want? Or should we stick to the Japanese traditional rules? keeping track of all the prisoners. Tell us what you think in the comments down below. We could end the video here, but this wouldn't be Go Magic then, would it? So let me show you one more example where the rule set actually affects the game result. This is a very interesting game in a 9x9 that's about to end. White pushes here, black blocks, and we're ready to count. The situation on the left is a seki. Both black and white have one eye, and all of those points in between are false eyes. So under Japanese rules, we can count the game right now, and the result would be that black wins the game by one and a half points with Komi. However, under the Chinese rules, white doesn't have to pass here. White can fill all of those false eyes by playing here, then playing here, and then here. Because every stone white plays on the board gives white one extra point. This way, the Seki is still here, but white just got three extra points. And this way, under the Chinese rules, it's now white who wins the game by one and a half points. 
Oh, and by the way, the Japanese and the Chinese rules are not the only options you've got. There are also AJ rules, New Zealand rules, Korean rules, Ing rules, and other exotic rule sets. But we'll talk about them some other time. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.